Okay, here we are in uh, September 1914. This is the position of the units right after the Central Powers movement phase. Um, all units were in supply and um, this is, like I said, uh, the current position of the units. Um, I still have the dis demoralized units, which will stay demoralized um, until the end of this turn. And any, I rotated the D marker to let me know that I need to uh, undemoralize them at the end of the turn. Um, other than that, any new demoralizations will carry over into the next turn. Um, but like I said, this is the end of the Central Powers uh, movement, and we're going to try uh, try to make some uh, attacks and hopefully uh, make some headway this turn. So I'll be back after the combat phase. Okay, this is the overall position after the Central Powers combat phase, um, September 1914. Uh, this turn, the Central Powers made a bit more progress. Um, still heavy going for them, but they're, like I said, they're starting to push their way through the neutral countries. And they've captured several cities this turn. Um, down here, they've captured Nancy. Nancy, how you want to pronounce it? Or this is Belfort. Up here, they captured Nancy. Uh, they captured, oh, excuse me, let me see, I'm going to try to zoom in here a little better, bear with me a second, hopefully it'll all go to autofocus here, with any luck, okay, they also camped, uh, captured Amsterdam, and they captured the fortress at, oops, I always miss this one. At Liege. So, they have made some progress. They've cut into the French production a little bit. Um, and they're close to capturing the Netherlands. Belgium is going to be a bit more of a uh, challenge, I think. So, anyway, that's it for the Central Powers combat phase. We will now go to the um, Allied players movement and combat phase. Um, we also removed all the dis, uh, demoralized markers from the German forces so next term hopefully we can uh, march back up fill in the lines and try to get some more f uh, firepower up north. So far the Schlieffen plan um, has bogged down uh, um, well it's just bogged down uh, Perhaps I should have put a lot more strength up there, but due to stacking restrictions and all that, there's only so much uh, combat power you can put on the front line. So I think maybe my mistake has been using the uh, support units, or not not using the support limit uh, units. Yeah, see if I can speak here. It's early in the morning. Um, not using the support units correctly. So anyway, I'll be back with the allied players movement and combat phase and we'll see what happens okay this is the position of the allied players units at the end of September 1914 they basically just moved up to solidify the line um, the British moved up a bit but I'm not really committing them to combat at the moment they're going to be kind of a reserve at the moment. Um, the French decline combat and we're going to go to the interface where um, we'll use uh, replacement points and see if there are any reinforcements. Actually there are some reinforcements which I wasn't paying attention to but some of them I don't think would have really applied to this term. So I'll make that correction and when I come back we will be looking at the October turn and that's a turn which I think we can start building uh, entrenchments and stuff so we'll begin the race to the sea. Um, been completely unable to like I said uh, 
make any kind of progress as the Central Powers did historically. We have not had the Battle of the Marne or anything even close to it. Now we're going to start uh, building entrenchments. So I don't think we're going <clears> to <throat> be able to reenact the original, um, the original campaign and such. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and play on up to December and we'll see what happens then. So with several French cities um, captured, I believe their replacement points will be uh, reduced um, enough that they won't be able to replace all their losses. But we'll see. Anyway, I'll be back with the beginning of the October turn. And as a matter of fact, zoom up here just a little bit. Um, as a matter of fact, I may just go ahead and do the whole turn and just show you what the, the results are of the turn. And that would make it a little bit quicker. We can get this done and move on to more exciting things. Um, what that is right now, I don't have any idea, but we'll find something. Anyway, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, well, I made it to, let's see, November of 1914. Um, technically, there's still one more turn to go, but I think I'm going to call it here. Um, it's taken me a week or so to get back to the game, and I have made little or no progress with the, uh, ac uh, I keep wanting to call them the Axis Forces, um, with the Central Powers. Um, my initial attack, I think, was way too weak and I did not pick uh, um, weaker points in the allied line in which to um, make my initial attacks. Um, so I've made very little to no progress. Um, we'll kind of zoom up here a little bit or move, whatever. Um, let's see. This is uh, pretty much the extent of the uh, central power advance. Um, um, I don't really see any need to go any further. The Central Powers have captured uh, two French cities, Nancy and uh, Belfort. Um, but other than that, that's it. Um, we're able to build entrenchments now, and everything's going to start uh, start slowing down. And I've not even come close to my historic uh, to the historic. Um, results for this time. So, considering that when you start playing the 1915 scenario, this is a 1915 scenario uh, front line or start line. The German unit should be at least up to there by you know within about six or seven turns. And I don't know if I see that happening uh, in this short scenario. I don't see me advancing even another hex row, so um, I'll have to do some thinking about uh, the offense and defensive strategies of this game and perhaps by next year around this time I'll have figured out uh, what I need to do. That or I'll have another World War One game um, on the table. Um, so anyway I would have liked to gone a little bit further but the energy for this game and just the slow progress that I'm making, uh, no fault of the game actually, it's just, it's it's my fault. Um, I think I'm going to call it here and try to pick something else that I think will hold my interest longer and will be a little bit more interesting to play. I'm not criticizing the game by any means. Um, it seems to be a fairly good uh, representation of World War One. so... Um, I'd like to give it another shot, give it a, another chance down the road, but I have so many other games that I'd like to get to eventually. Yes, I know, it just goes on forever and ever and ever. That um, I'd like to play and get <laughs> Most of these are unpunched too, by the way. Um, a lot more games I'd like to get to and check out and stuff. And there's more behind me, and there's more in the closet. So, anyway, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I just have 
a lot more that I'd like to do. So I'm going to call this series a wrap and I'll try to move on to something else. Um, at some point I would like to do kind of a, um, a play by YouTube um, game where you know moves are sent to me and in secret and I determine you know based on the game rules what happened and send that information back out to other players probably be a tactical game um, either man to man or squad to squad um, I haven't worked out the details yet but I have been uh, playing in a game um, from historygamer.com uh, they're playing War and Peace, or we're playing War and Peace, and so far it's pretty exciting, pretty fun. So I'd like to do something like that on a tactical level, um, whereby you only get information based upon what you can see, um, or you know, radio contact, that type of thing. So um, pretty much it would be about command control and maintaining contact with your side and communication of where enemy units are, or suspected enemy units. Anyway, that's for down the road, so um, until then, I'll talk to you later. Bye.